Hello everyone and welcome to the last HFA show in series one with me, Danny. And me, Alan. So, uh, saw last week's episode, Danny? Yes, I did. See, I can get through a whole episode without any bad jokes. Well, we'll see how long that lasts. Hmm. Thank you for watching our episode so far and for all of the messages that you've been sending in. I can't believe that we're already at the end of the series, but don't worry, we're not finished just yet. Danny, what's still to come in this episode? Well, in this final show, Jane concludes the top tips for product demonstrations in sales talk, and Ian and Jane have some of the highlights of the e-transit, our first fully electric commercial vehicle, in Tech Talk. We also take a look at what is happening with Ford and the wider dealer network, but before all of that, let's catch up for the last time this series with some of the biggest automotive stories in... In Case You Missed It! it. If you're of a certain age, you may be familiar with a hoverboard, but what about a hover bike? A what? Take a look at this. I can't believe what I've just seen there. That's taking transport solutions to a whole new level. You're right, Danny. A Japanese startup is hoping to convince motorists to swap their cars for a hover bike. Costing £495,000, the Ali wow. Technologies Cross Turismo Limited Edition is on sale now in Japan. Backed by automotive and electronic giant Mitsubishi, each is equipped with a conventional engine and four battery powered motors. We are told the hover bike can fly for 40 minutes at up to 62 miles an hour on a single charge. Wow. And the company aims to have manufactured 200 single rider hover bikes by mid 2022. What's that face for? No reason. Say it. I'm just not sure it's going to take off. Ugh. Moving swiftly on to this industry story that really caught my eye. Ford and a UK government funded consortium have developed technology to predict traffic incident locations based on data from connected vehicles, roadside sensors and accident reports. The new RoadSafe technology uses a smart algorithm to crunch anonymised data from a variety of sources to pinpoint where there is a higher chance of incidents occurring. This information can then be displayed on a map that identifies the level of risk and could also be used to warn drivers of hotspots and it can pinpoint the areas of concern so drivers could be made more aware of them and authorities can address them. RoadSafe is the culmination of four years of research conducted by Ford together with Oxfordshire County Council, Loughborough University and AI sensor specialists Viva City Labs. The initiative is also supported by Transport for London and backing from Innovate UK. Amazing to see the progress that has happened over the last few years and great to see that Ford are leading from the front with road safety. Up next, it's time to find out what's been happening with our dealers this week. So let's find out in this week's Network News. Alan Ford got in touch to tell us that back in October, their leadership team visited Hill Holt Wood near Lincoln, a woodland social enterprise with charitable status. Hill Holt Wood worked with the local community to create an environmentally sustainable woodland based on the green care model of well-being. The ancient woodland is accessible to the public, providing an attractive and safe green space where they can enjoy countryside walks and connect with nature. It encourages people to partake in a variety of activities in a stress-free, natural, outdoor environment. Allen Motor Group was so inspired by their visit to Hill Holt Wood that they decided they wanted to show their support. And that support came in the shape of a plug-in hybrid Tonneo Custom, which will enable the team to reach those in the community who may need their support. Whilst ensuring they travel in a more environmentally friendly and low emission way. This week we also heard from Birchwood Ford. That's right Danny, in fact their teams recently pulled up their pink socks and wore pink tops as part of the National Wear It Pink Day. Every year, Birchwood Ford turns to pink to raise awareness of breast cancer during Breast Cancer Awareness Month 
and to raise money for St Wilfrid's Hospice. Then, a week later, to celebrate the ruby anniversary of St Wilfrid's Hospice, Birchwood Ford painted their showrooms red in Paint the Town Red to show support for the hospice in its 40 years of supporting the local community. It certainly looks like they all had a lot of fun during both of those events. Not only fun, but they successfully raised just under £500 for the charity by baking cakes, sausage rolls and of course everyone donating. Oh, sausage rolls. Mm. I do love a good sausage roll. Me too. But I haven't finished yet, Alan, because then Birchwood matched this figure and donated an additional £500, bringing the total donation to £1,000. That's amazing. Well done to all involved at Birchwood Ford. Ford have been displaying the e-transit at COP26 in Glasgow. The e-transit will play a huge part in Ford's commitment to reducing CO2, which is one of the key objectives of COP26. It's hoped that the release of the e-transit will attract interest from businesses and competitors alike in order for this segment to grow. And with it, bring the environmental benefits that are inherent with zero emission vehicles. Ford have previously called upon policymakers, energy providers, local authorities, consumers and the auto industry to join forces on a nationwide electrification strategy that will set the country on the right path for 2030. In fact, since February, Ford has announced significant investments across Europe as it goes all in on electrification, committing its entire passenger vehicle range being all electric by 2030 and the majority of its commercial vehicle sales being all electric or plug-in hybrid in the same time frame. Despite this step forward into electrification, Ford believes that a coordinated effort is needed to help consumers move to an electrified future. Talking of the e-transit, it's not the only electric vehicle that Ford have shown in recent weeks. That's right, Danny. Ford have gone back to the future with this electrified F100 pickup truck called the F100 Illuminator. Based on the 1978 F100, the truck showcases the benefits of electric propulsion using a 2021 Mustang Mach-E GT powertrain. Powering all four wheels, it produces 480 horsepower and 634 pound-foot of torque. And the best news is, you can actually buy one. Call the E-Crate motor. It is available from authorised Ford parts dealers or online via Ford Performance Parts. Fantastic. Do you think they'll do one for my truck? Sadly not, Alan. This is currently only available in North America. That's a shame. Mm. And that was the news. We all know what's coming up next. It's my favourite part of the show, where we like to celebrate and recognise our CVP All-Stars. Again, this week there have been many five-star reviews arriving across the sales and after-sales teams. So first up, it's sales. And drum roll please, Danny. Congratulations to James at John Gross in Ipswich who has received this comment from Miss D. James is amazing. Only reason we travel so far. Perfect salesman, so kind and has our best interests and needs at heart. Which means I get the pleasure of announcing our after sales winner, or should I say winners. Trumpets please, Alan. <laughs> It's service advisors Alex and Mark from Platts of Marlow. Mrs W has this to say. Platts were very helpful. Booking the MOT and service was easy to do. The extra work needed on my car was done the same day. My car is running beautifully following the service. I feel I'm in safe hands when I use Platts and I'm very grateful to have such a good garage to use. Congratulations to our three CVP All-Stars this week. Your extra special HFA show mugs are on the way. That's that sorted then. It's time for the final tech talk of this series. This week, Ian and Jane are talking about the new e-transit, which is about to go into production at our Coachelli plant. Let's find out more on this fantastic new vehicle. Over to you. Welcome to the final tech talk of this series with me, Ian. And me, Jane. You may remember last week we got to know a bit more about battery electric vehicles. Well, this week we can bring you the latest full electric vehicle in our lineup. 
and our first full electric transit. The e-transit is due to start production in Q4 2021 before hitting the dealers in 2022. But we at the HFA show have managed to get early access to the launch information. So let's take a look at this game-changing product from Ford. Wow, what a vehicle. So Ian, which powertrains are available in the e-transit? The e-transit will be powered by a 400 volt, 67 kilowatt battery. So similar to the Mustang Mach-E standard range battery then? That's right. And in the e-transit, we have two different power levels. What are those? 184 PS and 272 PS, with an impressive 430 Newton meter torque. Wow, almost as much torque as me then. Almost, Jane, almost. So rude. So how does that relate to range? This gives the e-transit a range of up to 196 miles on a single charge. That's impressive. Does the e-transit have the same charging capabilities as a Mackie? Yeah, it certainly does. Charging options are plentiful for e-transit. Do I need another list? Um, I should say so. Uh, <sighs> you can choose from depot charging, public charging, or home charging. And can it accept fast charging? Yes, e-transit has been designed to accept both AC and DC charging. How long is that expected to take? The 11.3 kilowatt onboard charger is capable of delivering 100% charge in just over eight hours. If I use a fast charge? If you charge with a 115 kilowatt DC fast charger, then you can go from 15% to 80% in just 35 minutes. Perfect timing to go grab a coffee and a bacon bap with brown sauce, of course. Oh, no, I'm more of a ketchup guy myself. Mm. Mm. Anyway, back on topic now, Jane, because that's not all. Go on, what else can it do? Well, the success of the transit has been how capable and how adaptable it is. That's right, there is pretty much a transit for every business. Ford wanted to make sure that the e-transit shared these capabilities. So what have they done? Well, by positioning the battery underneath the floor, they can retain the full load space of the standard transit. So what? It means our customers can have an e-transit with up to 15.1 cubic metres of unimpeded load space mm -hmm. and a maximum gross payload of 1,616 kilograms. Blimey, that is seriously impressive. We're not done yet. The gross vehicle weights range from 3.5 tonne to 4.7 tonne depending on body style. Won't I need a different licence to drive over three and a half ton? Great question. It depends on your licence information, so it's best to get check on gov.uk to understand what you can and can't drive on your standard licence. Going back to body styles, what options will be available? Well, versatility is crucial mm. in this segment. And again, this is where the e-transit delivers. Great. Go on. Tell. The standard van is available in different lengths and heights, all the way from L2 H2 through to L4 H3. What about other body styles? Relax, we have you covered. A double cabin van is available in L3 H2 and L3 H3. And chassis cab? It's available in L3 and L4. Wow. Perfect for our conversion partners. So, how many different versions will be available? In total, Ford will offer 25 different versions of the e-transit. That's a great choice. What I haven't mentioned yet is that they are all available in rear wheel drive with a redesigned heavy duty independent rear suspension. That enables better steering precision and more confident handling. Have there been any other changes to the e-transit? Uh, there have indeed. Technology takes a step forward with the e-transit. Well, we do all love a bit of tech. The standard Ford Pass Connect modem delivers seamless connectivity to help commercial vehicle customers manage and optimise fleet efficiency. Same as the current transit. Yes, but now with a range of dedicated electric vehicle services available through the Ford Telematics fleet solution. 
What other changes can you tell us about? E-Transit also brings Sync4 communications and entertainment technology to commercial vehicles. Go on, I'm listening. Featuring a standard easy to use 12 inch touchscreen plus enhanced voice recognition and is available with cloud enhanced navigation. Great bit of tech there. It gets better. With Sync over the air updates, e-transit software and Sync technology will benefit from the latest new features and quality enhancements. Certain to take it to the next level. Anything else? Oh yes. On the road, with navigation enabled, fleet operators can benefit from advanced driver assistant technologies. What would those be then? Uh, traffic sign recognition, intelligent speed assist, which together identify speed restrictions and allow fleet managers to set vehicle speed limits. Really useful piece of tech there too. But I have a feeling you're not finished yet. <laughs> no, not yet. So Jane, what is one of Transit's strengths? You've already mentioned capabilities and some key technology. So what else do we need to consider, Jane? Uh, what about the driver? Absolutely. The e-Transit has comfort features such as electronic park brake and rotary e-shifter, which frees up more space in the cabin. That's a neat idea. Further enhancements include EATC. I know this. Electronic automatic temperature control. Spot on. Uh, you also have remote start and cabin preheating with keyless start being added too. I use my EATC all the time. But that's not all. E-Transit takes practicality and capabilities another step further in offering pro power on board. Pro power on board. Not heard about that. What is it? Pro power on board utilizes the E-Transit battery to deliver 2.3 kilowatts of power without the need for a separate portable generator. What can I power with this system? So you can charge your drills, saws, laptops or anything else using the onboard 230 volt socket and then get to work. Wow. How does that work then? Pro Power Onboard utilises the large electric battery to power your tools whilst ensuring you have the power to carry on your journey. Now that is really cool. Where can I find out more? For more information on the e-transit, visit the link here. And keep checking into Ford Learn for the latest courses and information to support you with this exciting new product. Also, be sure to check our YouTube page for more information as it's released. What a way to finish this series of Tech Talk. We will be back soon with a new series. So if there's anything that you would like us to cover, please contact us at the usual address. From Tech Talk, for the final time this series, it's back to you in the studio. Thanks to Ian and Jane for that episode. We're currently developing training for e-transit across both sales and after sales, so be sure to watch this space. But that's all for this series of Tech Talk. I can't wait to find out what key topics our Tech Talk team will be getting to grips with in our next series. Don't forget, you can watch Tech Talk back on our YouTube channel, along with some more detailed videos from the tech team. Yes, for the final time in this series, we come to, hang on a second. Tweet of the week. Sorted. Maybe I should have said no singing too. How rude. Last week I was told I had the voice of an angel. And how much did that cost you? Yeah, moving on. <laughs> Thank you for all the posts you've been sharing over social media during the series. This week we spotted this from Carl Thomas. Carl is a service manager at Furrows in Oswestry and he simply says, love this. Carl, hang on. Your HFA mug is on its way. We also want to say hello to a previous winner, Gareth. Or as we know him, Darth Vinyl. <laughs> who sent in this picture of him enjoying the show with his HFA show mug. I do like to see our merch, but I think Gareth has forgotten the milk. <laughs> Don't forget to keep using the hashtag The HFA Show and you could feature in Series 2. In this episode of Sales Talk, we join Jane to take us through the last stage of product presentations. Before you say it, it's my turn. I want to say it. Roll VT. It's an MP4 file, actually. <sighs> Thank you.
if you're not already sitting, pull up a chair and join me for Sales Talk. Because today we complete the five step walk around process. Before that, though, for the final time, let's return to Alan and his focus to focus on the interior. The traditional final stage on any five step walk around is where the customer finally takes their seat behind the steering wheel to have a look at what the vehicle offers to them. At this stage over the video, that's where you can be creative and show them a close up of the SYNC 3 system. You could even do a short tutorial about how to connect their phone to forward pass and how that all looks through the SYNC 3. Traditionally, you would run through the standard controls as well in terms of some of the technologies, such as on this Focus, which has head-up display, a quick explanation of some of these buttons around the, uh, the gear sticks and uh, the fact that all new uh, Ford Focuses come with the electronic park brake as well. So this is generally seen as that final stage in the overview for your customers. Again, as we've said throughout this, practice, the things that you're going to say to that customer. Don't practice so much that you become a robot with that customer, but certainly take the key things from those discussions and interweave that into the video to make it much more um, impactful and much more precise and personable for that particular end customer. What a guy. For the last time, thank you, Alan. It's an emotional time for all of us, but there's no time to dwell because it's our sales tip of the week. Whether you're presenting face-to-face -face or digitally, remember you can introduce add-on products and services early in the sales process. This gives the customer time to reflect and think about them so that when you are closing the business, you've already sown the seed in their mind. So, how can we relate this to today's step of the walk around, showcasing the interior? Think about the vehicle you're demonstrating. What accessories does it have that you can talk about? Remember, the earlier you position add-ons in the sales process, the easier they are to sell. And this brings us to a close, the first Sales Talk series. It's goodbye for now, but rest easy. We'll be back with more Sales Talk in our next series. Until then, we'd love to see your five-step walk-around videos. If your dealership uses social media, please remember to tag us. For the last time this series, yes, producer Kerry, we are on time. It's back to the studio. Thank you, Jane, for that episode. Feel free to send in your five-step walkarounds to the show. We would love to see them and they could feature in the next series. Don't forget that you can find our interactive guides available to support you with product presentations in Ford Learn. And if you missed a step, you can also watch the Sales Talk episodes back at any time on our YouTube channel. And if you would like us to cover a particular product or sales topic in our next series, then let us know using the hashtag HFA Show. For the final time, let's get you up to speed with what's been happening at the Academy. We are currently in the final stages of planning for our CV Ford Live event. Taking place between the 24th and 26th of November, we will be bringing you closer to our conversion partners, who should be shown on the screen about now. We will also be joined by members of the QVM and SVO teams too. Full details are available on Ford Learn and we look forward to seeing you there. With this being our final episode, we just want to remind you to make sure all of your training is completed by the 17th of December. We have availability across all curriculums to ensure you achieve the standards. So please log on to Ford Learn to ensure you're up to date. Last week we introduced you to Dan, so who do we have on this week's One Minute With? We met him in episode one. You mean the pilot? I thought we'd agreed it was an episode slash a pilot. But by popular demand, it's Gordon Meir sharing a little bit more with us. We'll start with an easy one. What's your name and job role? Gordon Meir, Curriculum Manager at the Henry Ford Academy. But what does that actually mean? Essentially to ensure that I provide the right training at the right time for the Ford network, incorporating technical and non-technical, including product and sales, management and leadership. 
What's your standout moment so far here at the Henry Ford Academy? That's an easy one. The way the team have performed and delivered the training through the pandemic. We've mentioned the new accredited pathways on the HFA show before. What more can you tell us about those? So starting in 2022, there'll be a series of learning pathways which will have a Ford accreditation at the end for specific job roles within the network. And finally, our three highly important questions. Your dream road trip vehicle? Mustang GT500, 1969. Your dream road trip partner? Uh, Scarlett Johansson. And pineapple on a pizza? Yes or no? Absolutely not. Great to hear from Gordon again. So Alan, pineapple on a pizza, yes or no? Yes. Definitely. Clearly yes. Mm -hmm. And finally, few moments in life compare to that moment you get engaged. Mm. For the two people involved, it's a moment neither will ever forget. That moment might be especially memorable if you present a ring made from recycled car parts designed to look like a Ford Fiesta headlight. Wait, what? Have a look at this. The Fiesta ring is finished in blue with jewels representing the headlights. And since the materials come from recycled cars, you could, in theory, use an old car that meant something to you and your partner. How romantic. We hope that you've enjoyed this episode and indeed the first series of the HFA show. Don't forget to follow us on Ford Learn or if you're in on our YouTube channel, hit like, subscribe and the bell icon to make sure you don't miss an episode. We will be back with a whole new series in the new year. But in the meantime, look out for our Christmas special where we share what really happens on set. Well, the parts that we can broadcast. Mm. So Danny, does that finally mean I can do my joke? I'm not sure. We'll have to see what producer Kerry thinks. <laughs> ah, fair enough. <laughs> Don't forget to let us know what you want to see featured in the next series using the hashtag HFA show. But from us and the whole HFA show team, it's, it's goodbye, goodbye for, for now. now.